Let me start the recording. Okay. So let's start. Um, I'm hearing, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So, uh, Welcome everyone to today's uh, Hyperledger Identus Maintainer and Contributor Call. Uh, we have a few topics for today. One second to plug this, okay. So as usual, uh, remember the um, antitrust uh, policy notice from Hyperledger Foundation, and also remember to adhere to the code of conduct um, from the Hyperledger uh, community. Um, for today's agenda, uh, well, as usual, uh, introductions, updates. We don't have many specific updates, but um, we have a, a topic from Open Badges that uh, Bjorn was going to present, but unfortunately he, he was not going to be able to be here with us today. Um, so I will just uh, forward a little bit uh, of the message uh, around that. Uh, there was a topic about uh, identus versioning that Lohan uh, asked me to add to the agenda a few days ago, but I'm not sure if Lohan is here with us today. Uh, I don't see him. Uh, no, I don't see Lohan on the call. No, oh, yeah. You see John Seep is available. Yeah, well, let's see if he joins. Um, oh, there is a, a topic related to having a um, a, a list of related community projects uh, that was raised, uh, I think, by Fabio a few weeks ago. Uh, but now uh, there is a again interesting on, on talking about that. So we will discuss that a little bit. A, a brief update on the matter of the working group uh, and as usual review of the open issues. So uh, do we have anyone new in the call who wants to present themselves to the community? Um, I think there is no one new, right? Yeah, it doesn't look like. I think we are all usual people. So no introductions uh, on the specific updates. Uh, well, we don't have anything. Uh, specific to share for today, uh, maybe some uh, things that uh, are going on. Well, uh, IOG is uh, currently doing PI planning. Uh, obviously, the PI planning uh, contains uh, a lot of the scope of uh, what is going to be uh, developed uh, in the upcoming uh, months for Identus. So uh, yeah, uh, the engineers are uh, quite busy these days uh, with the planning and all the stuff. Uh, once we have more details on what has been, uh, is going to be uh, included as part of this phase of development, um, most likely we will be updating the roadmap uh, to reflect that uh, for the community to be able to, to see what's going on. Uh, yeah, besides that, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else specific to share uh, related to updates. Uh, Fajad, do you have anything? Nothing right now. Okay. Yeah, probably next week uh, there are going to be some interesting things to share, but for today, that's it. Uh, so yeah, related to the open batch topic. Uh, well, this is something that I, I'm aware is a... a included into the API planning, uh, but also there is a, some work that uh, Bjorn made in this uh, feature request uh, related to the open batch uh, features. So this is just a, 
um, heads up or a reminder uh, for the engineers uh, to take a look if you haven't done so uh, on the comment that uh, Bjorn made uh, related to open badges. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some of the things that he already highlighted here uh, can be useful uh, to take into consideration for the planning of the open batches uh, uh, features. Um, he created this uh, ticket. This one is in the Identity General repository, um, but he also added uh, some, I think it's this one, yeah. Some additional tickets with more technical detail uh, on the Identity Cloud agent, so um, yeah, just Keep in mind that, that that information is there and may be useful uh, for the planning of the open badges uh, feature. Um, that was related to that. Uh, then I then took versioning. So this <coughs> was something that Lohan or Fabio may want to discuss, or I don't know if maybe Yuri. And not about identity versioning, about open badges. Okay. So we started to investigate all these um, requests, and thanks for raising this uh, tiny update. Uh, so there is a challenge uh, with uh, VC data model 2.0 that uh, uh, is described in the tickets. And uh, currently, we are thinking how to uh, refactor the agent. Uh, both cloud agent and edge agent uh, SDKs to support two uh, VC data models, 1.1 uh, and 2.0. So uh, we define that this task should be a prerequisite uh, for open batches task. As soon as we are compliant with uh, VC data model 2.0, it will be easy to adopt open batches 3.0. Okay. So it's an update. Thanks. Yeah, that's important detail. So open badges works with the other specification, the newer one. Is, is that it? Yep. Okay. Um, and we and do plan on uh, planning for that and doing that in this PI. Okay. We're not committing to it, but it is um, on the high priority. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, probably we will update that in the roadmap eventually once we have more details on the on the planning. Is there another raise it hand? No. Yep. Okay. Um. So, uh, identical versioning. So we have Lohan now in the call. Uh, I think Lohan, you wanted to talk a little bit about the versioning of Identus. Uh, as I understand, there was a discussion about restarting the numbering of the version or something like that. Maybe you can share more details. Sure. <clears throat> So yeah, I just want to kind of inform the community that obviously before we move um, from the Hyperledger Labs into Hyperledger itself, um, the internal trajectory of what we what we were called back then was Atala Prism, and we were building around V2 with the idea to ultimately release, call it the version one stable, release as version three, and what we want to kind of chair or put up for discussion in this community is what do the, what do the identity community feel is the right version for us to go uh, or, or, or yeah, what's the right version numbering that you feel is right in terms of releasing a version one of identity that would have been a version three of the dollar present, which would, which would have been the first, call it, uh, production ready release. So, we want to obviously include the community and ensure that we are aligned. And yeah, we want to get your views. What do you feel is the right versioning number for us to get to call it a first initial production release? Is that our internal version three or will it be a complete restart of the versioning 
uh, in terms of the community itself. Esteban, does that help? Oh, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, in this case, it will be uh, relevant for the non IO years <laughs> that are part of the community, because in the end, uh, you guys are the ones who actually uh, consume and use uh, Hyperledger Identus. So if you have any particular uh, comment regarding the matter, uh, I think it will be appreciated. Uh, also, Lohan, maybe it, it would be good to create an issue in the identity repository uh, with the proposal of the uh, versioning uh, of the new releases, uh, because probably the people will like to have a little bit of time uh, to think about it, uh, I think. Uh, and maybe if we have an issue there, it, it would be easier for them to comment uh, on that matter if they like the idea or if they have any um, additional consideration. Yeah, we could, uh, okay. don't, if there is an issue, we could send it out via usual channels on Discord. Um, how long are we going to leave it, the issue out and about before making a decision on it, just so that we can inform the community on timelines and all this? I think um, the... I think this... yeah, go ahead. No, I, I think this is something that we need to address within the next two quarters. Um, so in the next six months, we're going to get to a point where we have version X, which is the initial production release, feature complete. And I think the best would be, okay. So I see the community would like a Discord poll. So what I can do is I'll do from my side, I'll create an issue. I'll link that issue to a Discord discussion. And then let's get the community to participate in this. Obviously, <clears throat> I just want to set the scene from a steward perspective, which we are as IG. In our world, we would have had version three is, uh, as our first production feature complete release. But as it is now in the Hyperledger project, obviously we want to know what the community feels it should be. And yeah, so let me do that. Um, Esteban, I'll create a GitHub issue and then I'll link that GitHub issue to a Discord poll and then we can collectively decide what is that initial release and what is that version? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's great. Uh, yeah, uh, Fayad and myself, we will take the task to keep reminding the community <laughs> about the poll uh, for a while uh, until we get more more details, uh, well, more feedback. Yuri, your, your hand is a new hand rise or is the old one? Okay. <laughs> Double one, triple one. Okay. Um, any other comment related to that? Okay. So we can move to the next topic. So um, related community projects. So this is uh, something that was raised by Fabio, quite a while ago, uh, the idea was, well, is uh, to have maybe a section uh, within the Identus uh, main repository readme file uh, to highlight um, projects that are being developed by the community. Um, so this is a, an open discussion. Uh, recently, uh, have you seen the call? Yeah, maybe Javi, you, you may want to comment a little bit uh, because there is uh, something that he has been working on uh, and also Mix Mix uh, have been working on and they, uh, well, they would like to see uh, this uh, small spotlight uh, within the uh, identity repository, thing, uh, repository for community uh, related projects. So. I don't know, Javi, if you want to add something to the topic. Uh... Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So initially it is mix mix that opened a PR to make sure that at least the users can know that there is an implementation of Pluto available that is ready to be consumed. Anyway, it is what everyone is using so far on TypeScript. Um, so it, it makes sense. On the other side, one thing that Kurt is from, from our team too, 
was suggesting and, and raising the concern around this where do we draw the line on what are the repositories that we include and which ones not? And it it was more around does Hyperledger allow us adding other repositories that are not under the Hyperledger thing? Um, so this is more the concern. I think there is like common common agreement that some kind of documentation around at least reference implementations um, should be available mm -hmm. yeah i will i will take this this topic uh I probably will work uh, also with payat uh yeah most likely i, I don't think there is a, a problem i remember in other hyperledger projects uh, seeing links to reference implementations uh, in in the repos mm -hmm. uh, so i don't think it's a big deal but we will just double check uh, with hyperledger just for for sake of sanity, uh, yeah. but probably there is no issue. And uh, yeah, I will take this this topic and I guess probably what we end up doing is uh, adding maybe a small section here uh, into this readme mm -hmm. uh, for the community related uh, stuff uh, that we can include and define some sort of process for anyone else who wants to yeah. uh, be listed and define requirements and all that. Yeah, exactly. It's more around that. It's more knowing what are the rules for a repository to, to be included and make, make a more structured process. Okay. So yeah, thanks a lot, man. Oh, yeah, I will take uh, that action. Um, anyone else would like to comment about that? Okay. Looks like there are no more comments, anything in the chat, no. So I think we are good. Uh, then the next topic is related to the working group uh, of uh, how do we can use uh, Identus and the apps together. So yeah, I have been talking about this. Uh, the initial approach, uh, well, the approach that uh, we decided to follow is this uh, design science research uh, kind of thing. Uh, currently, um, we have been collecting a um, reference material that we can use to uh, understand a little bit more of what is out there uh, related to uh, integration of SSI and decentralized identity in the apps. So we have this Discord channel uh, for that specific matter. I'm going to post it in the chat. Uh, basically, what we are doing right now is just collecting. If you have seen a blog post, paper, uh, anything uh, on the web uh, that re can be related to this topic, uh, just send it through the chat. Uh, and what I am doing is I am making this uh, a spreadsheet uh, where I am collecting resources uh, and I am reviewing them uh, to see if they are relevant for the uh, specific topic. Uh, I think I will continue doing this for one more week uh, and once uh, we have collected enough information then uh, what uh, proceeds after that uh, is the next step uh, on the um, uh, awareness of the problem so it will be just uh, reading a lot <laughs> uh, of all this material uh, and gather some insights uh, of what is the current situation of uh, SSI within Web3 um, decentralized applications. So uh, yeah, it's a process. Uh, uh, we will be uh, sharing uh, what we are doing on the Discord channel uh, and uh, giving uh, insights to the community who wants to participate on what we are doing and how they can help. Uh, to continue working on this. And yeah, this is probably going to be a, a, a lengthy process, uh, but in the end, I believe that uh, a result is going to be uh, very valuable uh, and well fundamented uh, with sources of, uh, of everything that we uh, find. Uh, any comment regarding the working group?
okay, no comments. Um, okay. um Esteban. Yep. So can you share that spreadsheet? Oh yeah. Um sure. yeah, that would be awesome. And also, I guess, well, I'm not sure if since the time is now, but at some point, I feel like we should have some sort of wiki or some place where the Discord discussion will be, I don't know, more concrete <laughs> of our findings or whatever we, you know, whatever comes out of that research phase. But yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any plans to, or how are we handling that or you're handling that? So is yeah, it no. a GitHub or or what? So that is yet to be defined. So basically we are um, we are figuring this out along the way. Um, obviously, eventually the findings need to be published somehow. Uh, but right now, uh, because what, the, what we are doing only is uh, collecting information uh mm -hmm. well the only thing that we need is a spreadsheet <laughs> so yeah uh, but yeah of course uh, the idea of this process why we are doing this a little bit with not too much marketing of this working group is because we are learning uh, how to do this uh, mm -hmm. so this is the first one uh, we will see how it goes and then if this goes well the next one will be way more uh, structured uh, and probably we will do a little bit more of a uh, marketing of the working group. Uh, so yeah, there are a lot of things that uh, are missing right now, uh, but we will be uh, improving uh, along the way. Uh, so yeah, um, what you say is, is right. Uh, we need a place to uh, structure this, uh, how it's going. Uh, there are some options. Uh, Fayad was uh, also mentioning me uh, the option to use Intersect, uh, but I need to explore exactly what is what they offer uh, to hosting working groups. Uh, because the thing is like, we now have options, uh, maybe more options than before. So we can do a working group within Hyperledger, uh, or we can do a working group within Intersect, or maybe mm -hmm. do both at the same time. Uh, so yeah, a lot of these things uh, we are just learning. Oh. Um, yeah, there is another hand uh, who is raising the ah, Marcus. Hey, um, just what you said right now. Um, I was on a call just recently um, with an AIDAS working group, mm -hmm. and um, they are very vocal about the learning phase. So um, they're, they're governmental funded. Um, so they would actually have all the reasons not to be vocal about the learning process. Um, but they're really vocal about it. And they said, let's learn together. Maybe you could use that, um, and just say, in involve the community just from right from the beginning, like very loud and make the least mistakes that we can have, because what I feel is a, an issue with Intersect, for example, there have been a lot of things being done behind closed doors and the community has not been involved. And before Identus uh, was, oh, before, when when it was at Hala, people were all, all, all the time uh, talking behind the hands. If, if I don't know if that is an expression. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But now is this would be a chance to be to 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 showcase how you're open sourcing everything um, and being uh, on on the road of what you, you're trying to do. I'm 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 rambling rambling around because of the lack of words now, but um, I think the message is um, is there. <laughs> yeah, no. that's what Bowen mm -hmm. sees. Says. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I completely understand because, uh, I mean, before joining IOG, I also was a part of the community trying to work with Atala back in the day. 
And I, well, I am pretty well aware of the problems uh, of transparency <laughs> and openness. So uh, yeah, I, I will take your, your comment uh, to, yeah, to see how to improve this. Uh, but yeah, in the end, that's the idea, right? Uh, to have these working groups uh, created from the beginning uh, with community in mind and open. Um, the thing is like, this is the first time that we're doing it. So um, at least it's open. Maybe it's not too polished yet enough, but the goal is to uh, really drive more community engagement. Uh, that's why we are doing this small, uh, it's, it's more like a proof of concept of a working group. Uh, and then uh, get better and make things even more publicly uh, uh, and transparent. Thanks. Yeah. yeah so, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. No. It, it, what What Marcus said is totally right. And and there's like, I've I've seen, for example, building public, uh, sort of, um, you know, habits or whatever or, or trends. But there's also uh, learn in public. So maybe we should investigate how they do it. How like, like sort of a template of what does that really mean and could be useful for for this effort. Uh, and learning in public is something that is it's kind of new um, and not you know widely adopted, but I feel like it very much aligns with all the values that we share, I guess, in, in open source and and you know decentralized and, and technologies and SSI. So could be interesting uh, to explore. Yeah, I will take that concept of learning pro learning public. Uh, that's interesting. I I think it can be quite a good driver uh, for these uh, open source uh, related topics. Um, cool. Anyone else? Okay, so we can move to the last item of the agenda for today. Uh, the open issues, well, I checked all the other ones. There are only a few things here in the Identus repository. Uh, one was by Mixmix related to DCO uh, that I would like to disclose briefly. And the other one is from you, Roberto. Uh, so maybe you can discuss that uh, a little bit as well. So uh, this one from Mismix is related to uh, the DCO requirement and also to the GPG signing. Um, so basically right now, uh, the DCO uh, sign off that we need to do in all the commits, uh, that is something that is a requirement by Hyperledger. Um, that is part of the Hyperledger uh, charter. So it is a, a requirement that that is really uh, fundamental for them, very important. Uh, but the thing is that the purpose of DCO really is just a matter of the contributor uh, acknowledging that they are making a contribution under the terms of the open source license of the project. So um, yeah, really, the DCO, as far as I understand, the only reason for it to exist is for that. It's like a, an acknowledgement that I'm making this contribution, that uh, that contribution is mine and only mine. Uh, and I agree that I am contributing this to the project. Uh, and I know that this goes under uh, Apache 2 license, that kind of things. So that's the reasoning for the DCO uh, to be there. But also there is uh, this other thing that is kind of related but different. Uh, and it's the GPG signing of the commits. So when you have the GPG signing uh, enabled, uh, well, you will see your commit to be verified with this green uh, label uh, in the commit history of the project. So right now as Hyperledger, uh, I don't recall them uh, having any requirements for having a GPG uh, signing. Uh, of the commits, uh, but that doesn't mean that 
we cannot make that a requirement of the um, hyperledger identus uh, contributing uh, guidelines. So maybe it's uh, a question for for you guys. Uh, what do you think about uh, maybe adding uh, ourselves uh, as hyperledger identus uh, a requirement to make a GPG sign off of commits uh, mandatory? I don't know if someone has anything to comment about that. So it's not mandatory at this moment? Uh, I had the impression that that is a, a requirement. I was unable to find anything in the Hyperledger documentation. I mean, on our repositories, not on ah, Yeah, the, the thing is, I'm not sure if the thing is the IOG uh, as a company had that as a requirement, uh, but Hyperledger does not. Uh, so probably we. Um, we took that requirement from IOG in our repositories because probably was already set there. Uh, so yeah, maybe the, the, the thing is that there is a mismatch that probably our repositories uh, have the requirement for the sign off uh, for the GPG signing and Hyperledger hasn't that requirement. Uh, but if something that we are already doing in our repositories Maybe it's just a matter of uh, documenting it properly. Uh, just for sake of clearness, because it looks like Nick Miss tried to make a contribution and he faced some, some challenges because we didn't uh, specify the requirement for GPG signing in there. So, uh, yeah, if it's something that we like to make a requirement, we can just document it properly. Yeah, Yuri is putting some links to other project projects. Uh, let's see, this one is from... Esteban, mm -hmm. this is uh, another hyperledger project. And uh, as far as I remember, uh, having DCO for all commits is a requirement of the hyperledger organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the DCO is a requirement, but the uh, GPG sign off is not. So there are two different. Yeah, yeah. the GPG sign off is to protect ourselves. Otherwise, I can uh, make appropriate commit on your behalf. Yeah, exactly. Would you like to try? <laughs> yeah, no, but the thing is that. Uh, we haven't specified uh, the requirement for GPG sign off uh, in the uh, Identus MD files. So that probably is something that will go uh, maybe here in the contributing. Uh, so yeah. we didn't list it here, the requirement for GPG. So if it's something that we want to do, uh, well, I will update the document uh, to include GPG as a requirement. That's, that's the thing. So if we like to do that, then I can uh, just take the action and, and update the documentation appropriately, uh, accordingly. Okay, let me see the chat. Um, yeah, anything that someone would like to comment related to this show and DPG sign off signing? Okay. So uh, I think there was another item here to comment about. Uh, this was from Roberto. So this is um, a feature request. Uh, maybe Roberto, if you want to talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. Sure. So I don't know if it even makes sense or if it's possible, but I found 
like by that you can create the presence or the documents right from the edge client. And for some interactions, um, they are the, the would be great to have them published on chain for some use cases, right? but there's currently no way to do that. It's only bits that are created on the cloud agent that could be stored publicly, right, on, on chain. So uh, I was just thinking if it's even possible to have the agent, you know, just pass, hey, here, here's a bit, please put it on chain on my behalf, basically. Uh, because when you publish a date on chain, only the, I guess the, the, the private keys that created that date are supposed to be able to control it later. And for example, let's say I credit, uh, in our case, on the signing platform for CSANG, for example, if I create a date that represents uh, an agreement that everyone signed, I had to publish that on chain from a cloud agent that is a centralized piece, you know, that runs on our infrastructure. Uh, but later on as a customer, if, if I need to make any changes to that or any updates or whatever I want to do about that, if I want to change provider, there's no way to, to, to that to kind of move with me, right? Uh, but if that did or originated in my wallet, I have all, I have everything I need to kind of push on chain new 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 you know updates or whatever I need to do about that particular day to prove you know that the trust chain and all that uh, but I have no way to publish that on chain because my edge wallet is not close to a full node or anything so my question here and, and I found by doing or trying to figure that out I found another thing that maybe we can talk about in the q a uh, but that's my main my main thing about this uh, uh, feature. I don't know if it's even possible. I don't know if uh, anyone from from the team can can even think if it's a make even makes sense. Roberto, who would pay for the transaction? Yeah, the wh whoever takes care. Of, if you ask somebody, hey, put this on chain for me. There's a fee involved. I mean, there's no expectation for that to be free. But the the point is. Can you make it, can you publish a bit that you created on your wallet and ask anybody that could provide that service for you to do it? Uh, or it's just only the cloud agents. I mean, I know that right now only the cloud agents are able to do that. But I'm, I'm asking if, if it even makes sense or if it's possible or feasible for the cloud agents to do that on behalf of any particular day that somebody wants to put a chain. If that is something that the community needs and they don't want to worry about spinning up the infrastructure and maintaining it, then definitely we can spin it up, but that's not necessarily going to be a free service. Then it is a managed service that we will provide, but at least you don't have to worry about the infrastructure yourself. Absolutely. That is where we are going with present samples. It is there for you to leverage. We handle all the complicated infrastructure parts, but if you want to do it in a production environment, then obviously it's a managed faithful service. Okay, we have uh, Yuri. Yep, uh, I've been waiting two years till someone asks this question. It's an excellent question. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a strict line between a managed and unmanaged uh, solution because, as uh, was asked, uh, we cannot currently publish a DID from the edge agent. And uh, we started to discuss uh, this topic a couple of uh, months ago and even draw some diagrams and uh, requirements for the edge agent to be able to publish uh, its deed. It's a kind of pure uh, unmanaged solution when you keep your private key materials inside of the storage of the edge agent. Uh, currently, there are two options to do this. Uh, one option is to do this uh, through the cloud agent API. It's possible to send the uh, a transaction signed by the edge agent and publish did or uh, there is an option to use uh, some other external uh, API like uh, Blockfrost. If you can mm -hmm. sign your transaction with uh, Cardano 
the wallet keys, it will be published through the Blockfrost API and indeed will be published. Uh, this solution is independent uh, or decoupled from the cloud agent, but is a little bit harder to implement. Would it so be possible? I have, I have a question for Comfort News. <laughs> so, would it be possible to to ask Blaze to integrate, like, okay, this is this metadata. Can you do a transaction with this metadata? Can we ask like integration with Blaze in that sense? Like the, the SDKs can sign the, the transaction, the part of that belongs to the Prisma deed, but then the, the lace, the law would law does the transaction to the blockchain. Yes, it's possible to do using the Frost API as far as I remember. Yeah, that, that's all another solution, yes. Yes, but you in this case you need to uh, own uh, Cardano wallet with some ADA on it. Yeah, but but even the agent talks to another node, right? That runs the full node and the, the Cardano wallet, and 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 tells that, hey, publish this for me, right? Yes, and so uh, it's like it's like doing that through block first, but 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 the agent is doing that internally, right? Um, yes. Okay, so in theory, it should be possible for the agent to say, publish any payload that you know whatever it is. Go there, right? So in theory, you should the agent should be possible to publish but to another, I mean to a third party, right? A date yes, from yes, someone it's someone possible. else, right? And okay. No question. All right, cool. I, I would have a, uh, I would have a question, please. If the deed can does it mean uh, the deeds can be updated? By anyone, or it can just be updated by the cloud agent. In order to update it, you should own the private key material, a master key. Yeah, because you need to, to, to the, sign the proof, right, yes. on the update <laughs> of the from previous that, From that moment on, it would not be your deed anymore. That's good. Mm. This would not have control on it. It could be changed. And you you would not have control on it. Why? You have because what what you what you the what you are signing on the deed is different. Who is doing the transaction? There are different Correct. keys. Yes. So what is the matter wallet the and the Cardano wallet and the other is the the prison material basically the the deeds itself. But the payload that you're pushing on chain has to be signed, you know, by the private keys. If you want to update a date, I understand that you have to own the private key of that date in order to create a new one that is updates the previous one. And then it's a matter of who pushed that on chain. So my, my question is really from the edge client, there's no way to get a, a date on chain, uh, at least through the, the, the cloud agent. But it's technically possible. I, I mean, I was just asking if there's any limitations or something that I was not seeing that, that that makes that impossible, but it seems like it's really up about whether or not it's a feature or if it's you know important enough for enough people to, to consider this or adding this functionality. Uh, but but I feel like you guys were talking about this a few months ago, so that that's encouraging at least. I agree, I agree what, with what you're saying. It's like, if it is a feature or not, it doesn't seem even a very complicated feature. Cool. But it would be, uh, I think, I think it would be shut down by default, and you need to opt in. Yes, I mean that, that that's exactly right. And 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 here's the other thing I found about that. Right now, I don't know if it's a bug, but for example, I installed the latest uh, agent, latest SDK, Triumph, the latest uh, stack, and. Before, if the API key didn't exist, it just error out. And I noticed that in the latest version, the behavior is just run with it. Like it will create a div, even if I haven't created a wallet or anything on that specific, or or even set it up as a multi tenant or anything like that. The agent will just take a uh, random, you know, API key and just execute that, create that div, or publish that div. And then when I, I want to list those, if I don't, if I, of course, it's like if I change the API key, it won't return empty because it will not match anything that's on the database. 
But if I put the correct API key, it will return whatever payload or dates are registered. But before you needed to define that in an environment variable or something, and then it will block, it will tell you, no, there's no matching API keys, error out, whatever. But right now it just goes through. So there's no, I, I feel like it could be a bug, but I'm not really sure. Uh, or now if the agent is supposed to be under another layer of authorization to block those requests and then they will just take any API key and run with it and kind of isolate that API key to some ID or something where those are those deeds or operations are stored. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that behavior, if it's intended it's, or if, if it's a problem. It's not a problem, it's intended uh, behavior and it's described in the documentation. This functionality okay. is called uh, auto onboarding when you just provide a um, absolutely new key and it uh, agent creates a wallet for you. Uh, but in so, our in internal infrastructure, or these keys are issued by our platform ingenuity. So uh, it's only a side effect when you uh, don't uh, control the issuance of your keys. You can uh, uh, create a new tenant with uh, a random key. Right. Okay. So that means that I definitely, if I don't, I, I, the agent ha cannot be exposed publicly, really. It, it needs to go through under another layer that blocks mm -hmm. any request you, to the, because. You can disable this. You can disable this behavior. Oh, you can disable it. Okay. And if I disable it, I can, can I still use multi tenancy and onboard and just validate yes. those API keys? Okay. Yes. So why? In this case, you need to use admin API to uh, issue keys, uh, API keys uh, beforehand of any uh, request to the world. Okay, all right. I will suggest that that could be disabled by default unless that adds more problems that, because I feel like that could be easy to set up incorrectly. And if you have something that's on, publishing on chain, it's very easy to just run an attack and kind of publish and just waste the money on transactions, you know, publishing whatever random things. Um, it does, Robert, it doesn't make sense for me to compromise your uh, deed document because uh, our prison note contains a pretty heavy uh, verifi uh, verification uh, logic of each transaction. So there is an origin transaction when you created the did uh, for the first time mm -hmm. so uh, i cannot uh, simulate your signature uh, using my no yeah yeah I'm, yeah I, 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 yeah, yeah. I, I get that but if the agent is open and you can just use whatever api keys it's not really validating that by default it's it, it will you can create it and publish them through that if the agent is connected to mainnet or testnet, whatever, it will just run the thing. It will just try to publish there, right? Yep. It won't, but it, it won't publish anything. Remember, the Prism node will immediately reject any request if the cryptography doesn't match. If you try no. to submit a, 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 a layer two transaction that is not signed correctly or the cryptography doesn't, doesn't match, it will reject. And if the community wants us to host the service because you don't want to run an infrastructure, that is exactly what Prism manages, uh, Prism Sandbox is for. Um, where you can run your own cloud agent, Identus cloud agent, and instead of running all the heavy lifting infrastructure, all that you have to do is subscribe to us, point that transactions to us, we will validate them. If the cryptography, etc., doesn't match, we will reject them. If it match, we will pay the transaction fee we will anchor it to the ledger and we will return to you the necessary details so that you can continue. It's basically as simple as that. Um, and what I hear, what I'm hearing from this conversation is that community is actually requesting this as a service because they don't want to run that, call it heavy infrastructure in terms of the layer two interaction between Identus and the Corona blockchain. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people will benefit if that could be streamlined, right? Um, and could be offered as a service. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Because I've, I've been trying to run this infrastructure. We're learning, of course. Uh, but I'm, I'm discovering a lot of these things uh, by just trying to get to testnet, for example. And then the next challenge is going to mainnet. Um, and, you know, I'm learning all this. So I'm, I'm going to make mistakes and I'm going to try to avoid them as much as possible. So I'm very cautious of how to set this up correctly. And also because we're writing the book to try to explain this to other people, right? All the findings that, that we're having. Yuri, but, you have your Yuri. hand. If uh, I don't want to uh, talk a lot about this stuff, uh, Robert, pin me in Discord channel and uh, we will yeah. cover all the questions and uh, add documentation. Uh, you're right, it's possible to compromise your Cardano wallet if you just open agent and configure node to use uh, mainnet. Anyone with right. a random key can just create it. And uh, just try to publish it. Okay. Wallet, yeah. yes, we will steal your ADA. Not steal, but. Um, yeah, but we will waste it, basically. I mean, that's open. It's easy to, if that is open by default, it will be, you know, easy for people to kind of just public go with that mistake, right? So, uh, yeah, yeah. let's create a ticket and uh, switch yeah. our conversation to the uh, GitHub. Cool. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that was quite a nice discussion. Um, so I think that was the last item that uh, we had to check here from this list. Uh, so I think we are reaching the end of the meeting. Does anyone has any other general question, uh, comment that you may want to share? If there is anything else, um, I think that's the end of today's uh, meeting. Um, as usual, thank you very much for uh, attending. I think today was a, a good call. Yeah, a lot of things were uh, talking about. Yes, Marcus? Uh, I, have a one, I have one suggestion um, to get the word out whenever mm -hmm. you're ready. Um, I mean, I wrote it in the chat already, but I know you have um, guidelines to follow, but maybe we can do it like every participant that was here today and on the other days and who is on Twitter, just make a little post, just enjoyed um, Identus maintainer call today, it was a great session or something like that. Then you have, what is it, 19 to 22 people that are getting the word out. So whenever you feel the time is ready, um, Esteban, then let us know. And I think everybody will be happy to do so. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great idea. And actually there is nothing holding anyone back for making that kind of comment in their Twitter accounts. If you feel like you enjoy it today's session, uh, and you got to share that with your Twitter audience, uh, you are more than welcome to do it. Cool. And what hashtags should we go in for, like Hyperledger, Hyperledger Identus, right? Uh, yeah, I think the hashtag, Afayat, do you know? Yeah, so you can use the hashtag Hyperledger Identus. Um, Vox, what I was referring to about creating our own social accounts, uh, I had to create a Twitter account or X account. Um, using Hyperledger Identity's name, we'd have to go through the Hyperledger Foundation for that. But I mean, nothing stops anyone um, in their personal capacity tweeting about this or, sorry, I'm not sure if that's the right term anymore, <laughs> Xing about this <laughs> uh, <laughs> and getting the word out there. Cool. Awesome. Great idea, Marcus. Thank you. Okay. If there is nothing more, um, I think we are we're good. Uh, thank you very much for joining, and see you next week. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you.
Bye bye. Bye.